and welcome to week seven of Growing Up Guide Pup. I'm Amy, and this is Ricky, who is a little too tired to help me with this segment. <laughs> we had a lot of great questions this week. Next Raker wanted to know, how many commands does Ricky know, if any? So Ricky knows a few commands already. She understands how to sit when I ask her to, and she could stay for short periods of time. One thing I like to do is walk in a short circle around her because I'm close by her, and if she should get up, I can put her back down into the position that I had her staying in. Another command that she understands is her that's enough command. And we use this when we're playing with her and we want her to stop the game. So if I'm playing tug with her with the rope toy and I want her to stop, I'll just tell her that's enough and she should hopefully drop the toy each time. Come here, Ricky. There you go. And the last command that Ricky really seems to understand is how to come. So we've been doing this with short distances only and without any distractions yet. Another great question we had this week was from to go like one. This person wanted to know what type of socialization outside the house are we doing with Ricky and how we're handling it. We've done a few restaurants and she's done fantastic. And one of the things that she needs to learn when she's at a restaurant is to walk into the restaurant without bothering any of the patrons and to sit nicely underneath the table without trying to lick it or eat anything that's on the floor. And we've been working on this at home by anytime she's trying to eat something, we try to distract her with the xylophone and get her chewing on that instead. And this works very well at the restaurant also. So we make sure we bring a few toys with us so she has a couple options of things to chew on that are appropriate for her to play with. I put the gentle leader on her so she was trying to jump on every person that walked by, but uh, she's not too happy about it right now. So she's being a little fussy. Huh? Fussy, fussy. You gotta get used to it. <laughs> Another place Ricky has been frequently is the grocery store. We take her with us every time we go. We try to keep it very short just to avoid any accidents in the store because she's still learning how to hold it even though she's doing much better. And this is different than a restaurant because she's pretty much moving most of the time until we get in line to pay for things where she needs to sit quietly and wait patiently. This week we did a special outing. We joined some of our group members at a garden close by where we had a booth to answer any questions people may have on guide dogs and puppy raising. And Ricky and I sat at the booth and answered questions and she got lots of pets and there were tons of children coming up to her, multiple kids at once and petting her and she handled it fantastic, just like a pro. Well that's it for this week and remember at the end of this segment you can click on any of the thumbnails and catch up on any previous episodes. Join us next week when we'll have a very special guest with us. Thanks, bye bye! Hello everyone, I'm Amy, and this is Ricky, and we have survived our first month, so welcome to week five of Growing Up Guide Pup. <laughs> so once again this week, Ricky is sitting on the floor chewing on a toy, this time with her big brother Eli. She's getting a little mouthy, but that's to be expected with a young puppy. She's got teeth coming in. So toys are a good alternative to my arm for her to chew on. And also, giving her an occasional ice cube is nice, just because it helps soothe the gums. And it's awfully cute to watch, too. Like any puppy, Ricky needs to get vaccinated to prevent her from getting contagious diseases from other dogs. So this week, we took a trip to our vet where she was vaccinated, had her ears checked, her temperature taken, and basically got a full physical exam. She did wonderful, didn't even care about anything the doctor was doing, and pretty much almost fell asleep on the table. So it's important for her, just like any puppy, to have all her vaccines before she's taken out and about where other dogs have been. What's really amazing is Ricky's put on seven pounds in four weeks. So she's now up to 20 pounds. So we'll go again in four weeks. Uh, this week she had a perfectly clean bill of health. Yay, Ricky! Ricky's made huge improvements with her leash walking. She's finally starting to get it. 
she's still pretty much sticking by my side and walking nicely without pulling too much. She's still pulling a little bit. Last week, we weren't making very much progress. We were having to stop pretty much after every step. So this week, we practiced and practiced, and after multiple times of her going out, she's actually able to take a couple steps without me having to stop and put her back into the place where she needs to be. Huge improvement. We'll continue to work on this with Ricky, and hopefully over the next couple of weeks, she'll get even better to where we can actually do outings and go on walks without her pulling. So because Ricky's a guide dog puppy, I took her to brunch with me one day with my friends this week. And this is a very important thing that she needs to learn how to do, because, well, as a guide dog, she's going to accompany her blind partner out to meals. So our goal as puppy raisers is to be able to walk in her restaurant, sit down, eat her meal without having to fuss with our puppy under the table, and when we leave, have the person next to you go, wow, I didn't know there was a dog under the table next to me. They want to be inconspicuous, out of the way of the waitresses and waiters, and basically unseen until we leave. So we've got a long ways to go, but off to a really good start. So if you've missed any previous episodes, they'll all be available from just a click of a mouse at the end of this segment. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, Amy here. Shh, don't wake the baby. Welcome to week three of Growing Up Guide Pup. <laughs> As you can see, Ricky's been doing a lot of growing. Good girl, Ricky. She was about 13 and a half pounds when we first picked her up. And now, she's over 16. Yeah! I'd like to address a question from one of our viewers. Three Bricks Hire wanted to know more about potty training. Potty training a guide dog puppy is a little bit different than potty training your regular puppy. We don't put out newspaper, we don't put out training pads, we don't just toss them in the backyard to go potty. Are you chewing my microphone? So when we potty train these guide dog puppies, first thing is they're always on a leash, which means we got to go out there with them. We tend to take them out about every 20 minutes. I know, big inconvenience, but it helps prevent accidents. We've been outside for more than 20 minutes at a time waiting for this puppy to potty. When they actually do go potty, we give them the command, and their command is, do your business. When they're this age, they don't know it yet, so we wait until they're actually doing it to tell them. And the important thing to remember is these are very young puppies, and no matter how experienced of your razor you are, every once in a while, you will have an accident. Ricky. But we try to minimize those as much as possible. Uh-oh. Oh, she just peed on the bed. And the other thing is, as soon as they wake up from a nap or they've been sleeping in their crate, outside they go, and they don't go back in until they've done their business. I'm sure you were noticing Ricky was getting a little unsettled, so she's now on the floor chewing on a toy while we finish our segment here. One of the other things we do that's very important as puppy raisers is teach the puppies good house manners. So for this exercise, we're going to seed the floor with a hat, a few shoes, some toys, and a couple of socks. So one exercise we do, we kind of call it seed in the floor, where we place objects on the floor, such as shoes, socks, hats, anything that they're not supposed oh. to have, along with some of their toys, which they can have. Mm. And the object of this is for the puppies to pick only their toys to chew on. Yay! Good girl! Yay. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for tuning in. So remember, hit that subscribe button, leave any comments or any questions you would like to see answered in future episodes. Bye-bye! I'm Amy, this is Ricky, and welcome to week six of Growing Up Guide Pup. That's my hand. <laughs> so Zero Elis left a great question for me. 
He wanted to know how Eli was adapting, if he was still upset or jealous about Ricky being here. Well, he's gotten much better, but he's used to being in front of the camera and is very upset about being left out when the camera's on and, well, he's not in the shot. Eli just can't stand not getting all the attention. Hi, Eli. <laughs> Come on, Eli, we're trying to shoot a video here. So if you recall, last week Ricky had made huge improvements on her leash walking. Well, we're continuing to work on it this week, but we're running into a couple snags. Like pretty much any puppy her age, she wants to pick everything up, which can be kind of frustrating and difficult to move forward, especially when you're walking in grass, where there's a lot of leaves and twigs for her to pick up. So to help keep Ricky from picking up these objects that she's not supposed to have, we've started using a head collar. This works kind of like a horse's halter, where it gives us control over her head. And despite what many people think, it is not a muzzle. She has full function of eating, drinking, picking up toys, chewing on things with the head collar. It just gives me a lot more control of what her head's doing. So if Ricky's trying to reach for something that she's not supposed to have, I can easily just gently lift up on her leash and keep her head from hitting the ground or reaching what she wants to get that I really don't want her to have. This also works really well in the store setting or say in a restaurant, because you never know what's gonna be on the floor and if it's gonna be something dangerous that she shouldn't be ingesting. She doesn't know any better yet, so this is a piece of equipment that just helps her learn to be right by me preventing her from picking it up. So it's really important to remember, it takes some time for puppies to adjust to any new piece of equipment, whether it be a collar, a leash, or in this case, a head collar. So you may notice Ricky fusses with it, but she fussed with her collar too when she was younger and she did get used to that. And with some time and some patience, she'll get used to the head collar too. If you recall a couple weeks ago, we introduced our cat Oliver. This is one of Ricky's best friends. She will just follow him from room to room and is just infatuated with him. And well, he's just really tolerant of her and seems to really like her. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and please keep the comments and questions coming. I'm really enjoying them and it helps me determine what we're gonna put on the show because it helps me know what you guys are interested in learning. And remember, if you've missed an episode, you can access every single one of them at the end of this segment. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.